Welcome to another video of the machine learning from scratch course presented by Assembly AI. In this series, we implement popular machine learning algorithms using only built-in Python functions and NumPy. In this lecture, we learn about support vector machine or short SVM. So as always, we start with a short theory section and then we jump to the code. So let's start. So the idea behind SVM is to use a linear model and try to find a linear decision boundary, also called hyperplane, that best separates the data. And the best hyperplane is the one that yields the largest separation or margin between both classes. So we choose the hyperplane so that the distance from it to the nearest data point on each side is maximized. And this is the whole idea. So let's look at an example to make this more clear. So here we have our feature vectors in 2D with two classes, blue and green. And we want to find a linear decision boundary. So in this case, this is just a line that has the largest margin between both classes. So the distance from this decision boundary to the nearest point on each side is maximized. And these nearest points are also called the support vectors. So if we describe this in a mathematical way, then here we have this line equation w times x minus b. And this should be zero at the point of the decision boundary and one and on this side where the class is plus one and then minus one on this side where the class is minus one. And then this margin here, this distance here can be calculated with two over the magnitude of W. And W are the weights. So these are what we have to learn during training. So now if we put this into a mathematical equation, we can say W times X minus B should be greater or equal than one if y equals one. So for the right labels, we want to lie on this side of the decision boundary. And for the green for minus one, we want to be on this side. So here it should be smaller or equal than minus one. And if we put this in only one equation, then we can multiply this with the label. So we say y i times w times x minus b should be greater or equal than one and our y's should be should have the labels minus one and plus one so not zero and one in this case so now we have to find the weights and for this we define a loss function so one part of the loss function is the hinge loss and the hinge loss is calculated as the maximum of zero or one minus, and here we have this equation, yi times w times x minus b. So in other words, this is zero if we are greater than one or this term otherwise. So this means if we fulfill this term, if we are on the correct side of the decision boundary for here or here, then our loss is zero. And otherwise it's this term. So it's, if we plot this, then it looks like this, the blue line. So the further we are away from the decision boundary on the incorrect side, the higher our loss gets. So this is one part. And then we also add a regularization term. And now this is our cost function, lambda times the magnitude of W to the power of two plus, and then here, this is our hinge loss. So basically this is a trade-off between minimizing this loss here and maximizing the distance to both sides. So if we have a look here, then we see this distance is two over the magnitude of W. So this should be maximized. And in the cost function, this should be minimized. So we switch this around. And then here we have this lambda parameter that controls how important this part here is. So then we can differentiate between if we are on the correct side of the decision boundary, then our cost function is only the first part. So lambda times W. And on the other hand, um, we have lambda times W plus and then here we have the hinge loss so this is only for one component i so here we can get rid of the sum 
And now we have to find the weights and the bias. So we calculate the derivative of the cost function with respect to W and to B. So let's calculate the derivative or the gradients. Here again, we make this differentiation. So we check if we are on the correct side. And then the gradients of the cost function with respect to W is two times lambda times W. And the gradients with respect to B is zero. So no change in this case. And in the other case, then this is our gradient with respect to the weights and this with respect to B. So yeah, please double check the math for yourself. And now when we have the gradients, we want to uh, put this into our update rule. So here we say the gradient equals the gradient minus alpha minus the learning rate times the gradient. And then we plug this in. So in this case, the gradient is this. And then for the bias, in this case, there's no change. And in the other case, then we have this formula. So this is what we need. And now to summarize the steps in the training part with the training data, we first initialize the weights, then also make sure that our class labels are minus one and one. And then we apply the update rules that we've just seen for the number of iterations that we specify as parameter. And then we learn the weights. And then for the prediction, we simply apply this linear function and say w times x minus b. And then we decide for the sign. So if we are greater than zero, then we say this is class one. And if we are smaller than zero, then we say this is class minus one. And yeah, this is all we have to do. So now let's jump to the code. So first let's import numpy as np and then let's create our class svm. This gets an init function and here we give it the parameters. So this should get a learning rate and we can initialize this with 0.001 for example. Then we also want to give it the lambda parameter and a good starting point for example is 0.01. And then we also want to give it the number of iterations. And let's say this is 1000 by default. Then we want to store this. So we say self.lr equals learning rate, self.lambda param equals lambda param, self.n iters equals n iters. And then we also want to store the weight self dot w equals none in the beginning and self dot b the bias is also none. Then we want to define the fit method which gets the training data x and y. And then we also want to have a predict method which gets only the test samples x. So let's start with fit. So here we say the number of samples and the number of features is x dot shape. And here we assume that x and y are already numpy and d arrays. Then we want to make sure that the classes have the values minus one or plus one. So we say y underscore equals, and then we can use numpy where, and then we check where y is smaller or equal than zero, then we say this is minus one and otherwise plus one. Then we want to init the weights. So we say self dot w equals numpy zeros with the shape n features and self dot bias equals zero. So this is the simplest way to initialize this and it will work. But this is actually not the best way. So it would be better to randomly initialize the values here. But for this, I challenge you to do this on your own. But yeah, as I said, it works. Um, it still works. So let's go on. And now we want to learn the weights with the update rule. So we say for underscore because we don't need this in range self dot n iters and then for index and x i in enumerate and enumerate x. 
So over all the samples and then we check the condition equals and now let's have a look back at the formula. So this is the condition y times w times x minus b should be greater or equal than 1. So y underscore of the current index times and now we can use the dot product numpy dot and here we say x i and self dot w minus self dot b and this should be greater or equal than one and if the condition if the condition is true then we let's have a look again here we apply those different update rules depending on the different gradients. So for this, let's say self.w minus equals self.learning rate lr times 2 times self.lambda param times self.w. So let's check again w minus the learning rate times 2 lambda w. And for the bias, so this has no update in this case because the gradient is zero. So now we can check the other case. So in the other case, we say else the self dot w minus equals self dot l r times. And then here, this part is 2 times self dot lambda param times self dot w minus and then we have the second part so in this case minus yi times xi so here we say y underscore or actually we can use the numpy dot product to make the multiplication so here we say xi and y underscore of the current index and then self dot b minus equals let's check again minus equals the learning rate times yi so minus equals self dot lr times y underscore of the index and this is all that we need in the fit method so then we have learned the weights and now in the predict method we can do the approximation by saying numpy dot and then we apply x and here we have self dot w minus self dot bias and then we return numpy sign of the approximation so this is either plus one or minus one and this is all that we need, so now we can test this. So for testing, I already prepared the code and let's go quickly over this. You can also find all the code on GitHub. So here we import train test split and data sets from sklearn and matplotlib. Then we create an example data set with two blobs, so 50 samples and two features. Then we make sure that the classes are minus one and plus one. Then we split this into training and testing. Then we can set up our SVM and fit this with the training data. Then we call classifier predict with the test data. Then we also calculate and print the accuracy. And then I prepared some helper code to also plot the decision boundary and also plot the other two hyperplanes at the offset minus one and plus one. So if we run this, then hopefully this should work. So yeah, here we have our two blobs and this is perfectly separated. So this is our decision boundary and these are the two hyperplanes at plus one and minus one. And now if we print the accuracy, so this is 100% in this case, so this worked perfectly. So our own SVM class is working. And yeah, this is how we can implement SVM from scratch. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and then I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.